Good evening, good evening, and good morning, and good afternoon. Depends on where you are in the world. Wherever you are, it's a great day because you are at a Rotarian meeting, which automatically makes it a good day. The sun is shining in different parts of the world, and the sun is not shining in other parts of the world. But that doesn't mean that we don't have it shining in our hearts. As Rotarians, we know the sun will come out tomorrow. Things will be good again. We have that positive feeling, the positive image that we know things will get better. So they will. It's coming. It's just coming a whole heck of a lot slower than what most of us had wished it would. A year ago, if we go back to February of 2020, in the middle of February, people were starting to get concerned. They didn't know what 2020 was going to bring us. And it brought us a lot of darkness. Now, I don't know the numbers in the other countries, but I can tell you in America, over the weekend, they went over the 500,000 death rate. So we have lost a lot of people. That's very sad. But those of us who came out of it are going to be stronger and better because of it. We have learned many, many things about each other. Living in lockdown in homes with your spouse, with your children, with your pets, a lot more hours than what you had expected to do was difficult for all of us. We had to adjust. We had to get along. One of the good things that came out of it is the Zoom meetings and not only Zoom, but also um, Microsoft Teams and other places where they're having online meetings. This is a positive that came out of it. So we need to grasp that positive. Remember the negative, but don't dwell on it. Grasp the positive and move forward. And that's what we're going to do this year in 2021 is move forward. Hopefully this year is going to be a leap forward for most of us. We know that some things have still been canceled this spring and summer. Maybe some more may be canceled before the year's over, but we're going in the right direction. We just got to keep believing that and telling people that. And as Rotarians, we owe it to our communities to think positive. To think positive and talk positive. Talking negatively about the different situation is not going to help anybody because most people already know how bad it can be and they don't want to talk about it. So we need to be talking about positive things and going in the right direction. Now, also, who can tell me, not, not Randall, not David Eastman, not Rami, not, not you three, are the rest of you, who can tell me what was special about yesterday? Ah, 116th birthday of Rotary. Thank Yay. you, Robert. Yay. Very and, good, Robert. And the anniversary okay. of St. Jay, Petersburg Jay, International Jay, Jay, Jay. Rotary Club. All right. Yes. And the anniversary of our club also. Oh, <clears throat> another milestone. So the 23rd is tied to several different things. The anniversary for our Rotary, the anniversary for our Rotary Club and men's day and it's not just men's day because i know i was in war in vietnam there were women there with us also defending and in world war ii there were women defending i know we call it men's day but in reality it was supposed to be defenders day the people who defended yeah. the country and that was men and women so let's not forget that there were women who participated in the war also so we got to remember that but we have birthdays, many of them to celebrate, Rotary, Rotary Club, and Men's Day. And do I have any other birthdays out there that I don't know about? Anybody else got a birthday this week? Michael. Yes, Jean. Our club celebrates its 70th anniversary, March 16th. Very good, hey, 70 years, woo! Wow. Oh my goodness. And, and you were there for the first meeting, right? No. Oh, no, but my good friend is. Very good. Thank you, Gene. I thank you for the, that, that moment because we need to remember that Rotary has been around a long time and not many of the very old Rotarians are still with us, but we still have some Octarians and others who remember a lot of things within Rotary. This is one of the few places that I come to where the people are older than me. So I'm 73 and I'm not the oldest here. I'm sure not the youngest, but I'm not the oldest either. So we all need to work together from all ages and all backgrounds. I'm going to get the meeting started. 
in one moment it's, if uh, i can find my if i can find my my slides i don't uh, have it, my slides. by the way um it's also yes. world peace day eh? today today 24th or 23rd 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 is world peace day it was yesterday yes yesterday okay all right so oh that's, a, that's, a, I, that's i understand that's another one. More... <laughs> i'm sorry heinen go ahead yeah, and I, I can tell you also that, yeah. uh, it, sorry, we're still celebrating. Eh? Mm. <laughs> and in, in 1954, 23rd February, it was the first injections of the new polio vaccine. So now Oh, you know. interesting. Many, 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 many bit... things. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to be talking, we're going to be online here for about an hour and a half almost. Anybody that knows an event globally or locally that is celebrated during this week anytime anytime between the 20 the 21st to the 26th so seven days 21 february to 26 february if you know of an event please put it in the chat box go to the chat box it's open you can go there and add it in we would like to have that we will we will collect those as a club because we do record the meetings that's something that we don't brief here, that we should brief. I know we do it in Toastmasters, but we don't brief it in Rotary very often. Our meetings are recorded. So if you have, if you want to make a comment, you want people to know about it, you can put it in the chat box or you can say it and we do record it for our speakers so people can see our speakers. But also we should warn you ahead of time that it's being recorded so that you know that, so that you don't say anything that might be embarrassing to you and you don't want other people to hear it. So that's just a courtesy. I know we do it in our Toastmasters meetings. We probably should do it here in our Rotary meetings also. Because every once in a while, somebody lets a faux pas or a word or something slip out that they shouldn't. You just need to be aware that it's being recorded. So that's a little bit of news for you. Okay, President's comments. My comments is, I have a bit of news for you um, that I'm going to save one for later and one for now. Yesterday, actually last night, late, a little bit later than this meeting, last night, myself, Randall, and Rami went to Modin, Israel. Now, Modin is between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. It's about 100,000 100, people. They have a Rotary Club there that invited us to come to their meeting. It was a hybrid meeting, both online and live. It's a small club, which is eight members, but we shared information, what they're working on and what we're working on. We told them about our projects and we found out that they were working on some similar projects, helping children and helping some hospitals and doing things. It was a very active group for only eight people. Small club, but very, very active. We had a great time talking to them. We agreed to continue the conversation, maybe work on something in the future, and I want to call recognition to one of our newest Rotarians. And some of you have already seen him on screen or, or heard him talk just a little bit. And that's Rami Saeed. Rami, as we were going getting near the end of the meeting, he raised his hand. They called on him and he asked them a question that they were surprised by. Here are three men from Russia at their meeting. And Rami asked them, what can we do for you? They were a little surprised by that. They didn't have a ready answer for it. I think he shocked them, but he showed the fact that Rotarians are trying to help others. And it came across as a very positive statement. They took it as a positive statement, and I'm sure they're going to come back to us asking for something, but they also want to contribute. So we're gonna find out what kind of connection we can make with them. But it was a very, very good meeting. It was set up by Felix Gluck, He's the one, is he with us tonight? Been, nope, don't see him on the screen. He's been, he's been to several of our meetings in the last few months, and he's the one that arranged it. So we really had a super good meeting. It is positive for myself and Randall and Rami and the rest of our members in our small club. It's positive for us to see another eight person club who's out there doing good, positive things. We hear about all these big clubs, the ones that have 40, 50, 100, 150 members doing things. 
But here we have our small club with nine members now, their small club with eight members, and both clubs are active. Both clubs are carrying on the Rotary tradition of trying to help the community and help, trying to help unite people around the world. So I'm very, very happy that we went there last night. I can't wait to find out what they got in store for us that they want us to help them with. And we're certainly going to ask them for help on our projects. So it was a very, very good evening. As the president, my term is almost over. It'll be over on June 30th. We're not sure where we're gonna go. We're gonna stay online as long as we have to. When we're able to get back together again, many of you have been to our meetings at the Angel Tier Hotel. You've been in St. Petersburg, you've attended those. We will go back there. We have talked to them. They're ready to accept us, but we're not ready to go yet. And as soon as we can safely go there, we will be going back live and we will have hybrid meetings so that we can have people online and then have people live both. But that's, that's a maybe, that's a possibility. I know it's going to happen someday, but I don't know when, don't know if it's going to happen before June 30th or not. It's going to depend a lot on what happens with the virus and the pandemic in the area. So we'll have to wait and see, but that's our plan going forward. We don't want to lose all the friends that we've made. You people from around the world, sometimes we got 35 and 40 people on, on board with us from around the world. That's fantastic for a small club with only nine members. We'd like to continue that and continue the cooperation. So that's our target going forward in the future. Those are my comments as opening as a president. I'm gonna turn it over to Randall and ask Randall to give us the comments of this, from the secretary's viewpoint. And then we will move on to our program that we have tonight. So Randall, it's now thank you. comments and you got it. Okay, thank you very much. Let me share a screen, I'll be brief. First thing, uh, today we have a classification speech, our first in what we hope is a series of them. And I was doing a little digging through my notes and I discovered that we don't have classifications in our records for everybody. And uh, the ones that we have may be not necessarily the most up-to-date or accurate. So as a club, we need to uh, take care of that, Michael. And we'll maybe do. even it's worthwhile to have a, a meeting just talking about what is the classification principle and why it is meaningful in Rotary. Oops. That sounds like something you should do. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do that. <laughs> I can do that if we, if we look at our schedule in uh, coming up, perhaps if we have a gap. So next week we have this fine gentleman joining us. And I noticed that uh, uh, you said something that made both uh, Barrett and Alexander look at each other and laugh. And I don't know that that was because of the size of our club or something like that. But uh, Alexander is uh, our living, breathing charter member and was a past president of the club in 2007, eight. And so he is going to give us a presentation about how our club came to be which should be very interesting for all of us. And that's next week. Following that, we have Robert Morrow, who's also with us today, yep. another fine gentleman. And Robert is going to give us a presentation about the Maktaba project that his club in Canada is uh, planning and conducting in conjunction with a club in Nairobi. And this is to help children outside of the capital city who uh, need help with education. So he'll give more information about that. Oops, let's get to the next slide. Come on. Let's come on. Uh, following that, uh, two weeks later, we have PDG Dr. Robert Scott. And Nancy, who's on the line here, uh, kindly introduced us to Robert Scott. He is a Canadian, which is uh, number one, a good thing. Secondly, he's a past district governor, which is also a good thing. And number three, he was past chair of the International Ro uh, Polio Plus Committee of the Rotary Foundation for eight years. So he has a deep, deep understanding about what the Polio Plus program has been about, what its challenges were and its successes. And he said, it's always been about the children. So he will be with us in a few weeks. After that, and before that, we have gaps. So uh, we really, really appreciate anyone who can suggest a speaker. Uh, uh, I have to say that we've been very fortunate that uh, our guests have introduced us to several interesting people and we hope we can keep that up. 
And that's basically it. So if you haven't followed us on any of our social media, please do. We would like to get more likes. And now back to you, President Michael. Thank you, Mr. Randall. One of our problems is, Randall, we got to be more likable. You know, if you're more likable, you might get more likes. We got to work on that for all of us. Uh, we got to figure out how to be more likable. We neglected, at least I think we've neglected, over the last several years. I've only been a member of this club since 2010. And I think we neglected trying to get to know our members a little bit better. And when I say knowing our members, we need to know their classification and know a little bit more about their background, who they are, where they come from, and so forth. Sometimes you join a club, any of you, you join a club because of moving somewhere, and there are members already there, senior members, members who've been there longer than you. And maybe they did a classification speech sometime in the past, but you weren't there. So now you don't know what their background is. You're supposed to work with them, deal with them, work on projects with them, but you don't know them very well. So in discussion among our board members, we felt that this classification information would be very, very useful. One of our members, our treasurer, Andres Bone, volunteered to do this. And when he asked, when he asked us, what should he speak about? We said, well, tell us about yourself. Well, we know a little bit about you, but not a lot. And I, he asked, what else could he speak about? And we said, well, you could talk about how do, how do we get materials in and out of Russia? Because that's what he does during this pandemic or about your company or about any of those things. So this evening, he's going to talk to us and give us a little bit of explanation and try to tell us a little bit about what was going on and, and how he got some things done during this time frame. The time frame that it is that we are all kind of stuck in. So I'm going to I'm going to screen share in just a moment, see if I can get my computer to work correctly, and tell you a little bit about Mr. Andres Bohm. He's the CEO of the current company here in Russia, which is a part of a larger international organization. He'll tell you about that. He's going to talk about the fact facing the problems that this company had during the virus. Now, you need to know that Andres is a treasurer, not only a treasurer for us, but a treasurer for a couple other organizations that he's a member of. So he's a trusted person. And if, if you don't know anything else about Andres, you need to know that you don't give money without getting a receipt from him. If he doesn't have his receipt book, he won't take your money because he makes sure that you know that both parties, you and him, know where the funds are going. And he's been our treasurer and giving us great reports. I've done audits on him twice and everything has been perfect. Now we have our project with the Children's Center, the um, used to be the uh, Romanov Center here, the project we have. And he has stepped up and said that he is going to be the person to lead that effort. You should have seen the smile on his face when he went there and he talked to Goran, our first child that we put the funds in for the child to go through rehabilitation. The picture that he has of him and Goran is priceless. Here's a smile on a man who is very, very happy helping somebody else. And I think that tells a lot about Andres. He's happy helping other people. He's volunteered for a lot of different things. He'll tell you a little bit about that. He's a graduate. He graduated from the university with a master's degree in that electronic closed loop and control systems. I'm not quite sure what that is in Germany. And then he has worked in the tobacco and food industry for several years. He came to St. Petersburg in 2008. And he has been serving on our board of directors since 2016. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Andres Bone, and we're going to be all ears listening to you, young man. The floor is yours. Unmute yourself, please. Unmute yourself, please. So thank you very much, President Michael, for these nice, uh, encouraging words. 
Yeah, it is a, a long way I have walked and to come where I am. Sometimes it was easy, sometimes it was steep, like if you walk in the Alps. And uh, it is great to have the honor right now to share with you my experiences over the last 12 years in Russia. You opened the door to share a little bit the um, challenges these uh, last 12 months gave all of us. And I will briefly do this. In order to do so, I will share first for five minutes a short company video. The reason why I'm doing this is that when I explain about a little bit or talk a little bit about the COVID-19 challenges or the new task we have in front of us, the CO2 neutral business, that you see the context in which all this is done. So if you don't mind, I would like now to share with you the video. Fokka & Co. Germany is an international company founded more than 60 years ago by engineer and doctor Heinz Fokka. His invention spirit, production quality, and efficiency, together with a unique business strategy, are still family-owned. Fokka & Co. develops, designs, manufactures, and delivers packing machinery for the tobacco and hygiene industry. In order to support its customers worldwide, Fokka has founded several subsidiaries in different parts of the world. Limited liability company Fokka Service St. Petersburg is a 100% daughter company and legally registered in Russian Federation St. Petersburg. In order to support the customers in Russian Federation and CIS countries, Fokka Service St. Petersburg was founded in 2008. The Fokka Service St. Petersburg team specializes in sales of spare parts, commissioning, format size changes, maintaining and repairing of the equipment at customer sites. sales team is supported by our professional customs, warehouse, and logistics department to legally import goods and deliver them to our customers. The stock is regularly reviewed by considering the consumption of the parts by our customers. Based on the min-max analysis, optimized delivery time for min-max parts can be offered. By keeping spare parts in our local stock, Customers can concentrate on more important internal processes as Focus Service St. Petersburg takes care of the Focus Spare Parts delivery. To ensure safe and secure transportation and to avoid negative environmental impact on the goods, they are packed for delivery in cartons or wooden cases. In order to support customers in terms of repair, our service technicians can take a faulty unit out of a machine and bring it to our workshop for repair. In our fully equipped workshop, we offer repair services or general overhauls of machines sub-assemblies. The service modules are tested and certified in accordance with FOCA certification processes. Some of our customers are interested in establishing a maintenance contract with FOCA to optimize the performance, product quality, and lifetime of FOCA machines.
Part of this perfect fit maintenance concept is an overhaul of modules at Boca Service St. Petersburg by use of so-called exchange modules. Our experienced and well-trained engineers offer repair or upgrade of highly complicated gears and mechanisms, such as the upgrade of the gearbox to hydrodynamic indexing gearbox. Our professional, highly trained, and certified technical service team is spearheaded by a senior German specialist and provides on-site service such as commissioning, adjusting, maintaining, and repairing of Volca equipment. We have gathered a team of the best specialists in order to provide the highest level of service. Customer service is our main priority. Foca & Co. Accuracy and speed since 1955. Okay. So far, to um, our little organization we have here in St. Petersburg. It should have given you an impression that we are not only handling the parts, but we are also importing the parts uh, in close discussion with our customers, what are they need uh, by aligning the maintenance schedules of the production machines uh, so that uh, there is an uninterrupted supply of the tobacco products to the final consumer. The tobacco industry does not like any interruption of the product supply to their consumers. Now put yourself in a situation 13 months ago. We all heard that in China, the first COVID-19 Cases were reported. It started the world talking about lockdowns. And it was the end of February where I thought it might not be bad before I go to a one week vacation skiing to the Caucasus to have all my employees equipped with a laptop so that in case they can work from home. So we gathered all the old laptops we could find, prepared them, shared them, and gave them out to the employees. And we, I said goodbye, everybody is nicely organized. They were still in the office. Um, and I flew to Mineral Vodo in the Caucasus, started enjoying skiing. And then on a Thursday, the presidential decree was given Locked down. Lifts were closed. Every pub, every transportation, everything was closed. And I was sitting three and a half thousand kilometers away from the office. The challenge was at that time remotely to organize this move from the office scheme into the home office scheme, which due to the motivated and dedicated employees went very smoothly. So we remotely together with the administrative and HR manager were in the position to create all necessary bureaucratic documents. And whoever has done some business in Russia will understand that when I'm talking about 
bureaucratic documents that this is a pile of documents to be created. It starts that you have to implement sanitary rules. You have to publish them. Every employee has to sign that he got knowledge about it. You have to store this. You have to forward these kind of informations to the public authorities so that they can check whether you follow the recommendations, yes or no. With all these documents, then at the end of the day, you have the chance to register and to get in 2D code. Why is it necessary to have a 2D code? Yeah, if you receive some visitors, and we sometimes receive visitors, either as customers or logistic uh, companies, which are picking up or delivering our goods. And they have then, by scan the chance, by scanning these 2D codes um, to see whether we have fulfilled all the regulations which have been set up by the Russian authorities. So remotely we could manage this uh, and here I really have to share with you that Russia is perceived differently than it really is. It was all possible via internet on the sites portal on the internet sites of the governmental authorities of the local authorities we had the chance to talk to the governor of St. Petersburg in order to make our business a um, very important business to support the tobacco industry and so on and so on we we got response not always the response we were looking for but we got the response it was all possibly possible remotely and if we had some times to sign some documents and you're sitting in an apartment you never thought about to be prepared to do business there you had no printer nothing so what to do yeah you put the things on the stick you go to the russian post office you ask them for support they print you sign they scan they put it back on your stick and you can send out by mail and electronically the signed documents. So that was really, really very helpful. If we look from the logistics side, we have a weekly material flow from our parent company in Germany with spare parts to our stock here in St. Petersburg. And we normally used for this logistic, um, the ordinary flights from Hamburg to St. Petersburg, where in the, in the compartment below the passenger's cabin, a lot of goods could be transported. Once of a sudden, cut off. No flights anymore from Hamburg to St. Petersburg. How to bring in the goods remotely, three and a half thousand kilometers away from office. People are in the home office. No personal contact to any logistic departments or companies. It worked. We had the chance to talk to our logistics, to logistic companies in Russia. We moved away from Aeroflot flights. We moved to um, the Emirate flights, which had cargo flights through um, the Emirates to Moscow and organized the transit from Moscow by truck to St. Petersburg. So it was and is possible if you have the right people with the right motivation on board and if they are willing to learn and to adapt to new situations very fast. And here's also an advantage of the Russian philosophy or the Russian uh, mentality. They are flexible in thinking. They are responsive to very fast responsive to uh, changing situations, much faster than I am used from my German colleagues. They, they have the rules, they have the processes, and if the process is stuck because one of these steps is no, long, no longer possible, then no, no detour, no, no I, I have, we have to think, rethink the process. So here they find always ways to 
optimize and in the idea to support the customer, which at the end of the day brings us the money. It's not the company who brings the money, it's the customer who brings us the money, who makes us possible to, to pay salaries. If I look also back now the 13 months of challenge with COVID-19, 13 months I have sent the employees in home office voluntarily, they can go to office or can go to, to home uh, in the home office. I have to say that uh, there, there have been three phases. At the beginning, which lasted about two to three months, everybody was enthusiastic, supportive, motivated. It was a new working regime. No one was anymore forced to be in the office at 9.15 and cannot leave earlier than 17.45. There were flexibility once of a sudden. They could in half an hour take care of our family or other business. They did the job. Flexibility was the most motivating part. Then after that phase, the phase came of disenchantment. Here, the people realized, oh, the control is gone. I'm free to decide when and what I'm doing. And if I'm right now not, I'm busy with something else, then I have the chance um, to say to my colleagues, uh, I have some issues with family issues. Can you please take care about this? And everybody was willing to help. But it did not help at the end because people moved into their comfort zone. Nobody saw them whether they are really working on the desk or not, whether they are willing to pick up something because everybody was at home. Nobody could see what you're really doing. The results were there, yes. But I realized that it took longer. I realized that it the motivation to help each other went away. And uh, I'm now in the situation that I have to recall, although we are still having high numbers of infections, um, thinking about to call the employees back to office so that there's a, that they control each other, that they motivate each other. Uh, when they go into the kitchen to grab a coffee or a tea, a short question, what about this quotation? Has this been done or this been done? Um, when is the truck coming to pick up the goods so that I have to prepare the documents on time? All these short, non-official communication to do by email, texting, WhatsApp or Teams, um, it is not so efficient and helpful as the short visible contact into the eyes and have a talk about it. Yeah, uh, I would like to leave it there uh, for the short term challenges with regard to COVID-19. While we were with COVID-19, I also, of course, from the Caucasus participated in the Rotary regular meetings. And in April 2020, we had guest speakers from the company All Good. What are they talking about? They were invited to share their ideas. What can be done to reduce CO2 and to create sustainability in business process? And if you don't mind, please let me jump to this and let me talk a little bit about this. I was really surprised that uh, three young ladies, really young, grabbed on this topic and presented in such a professional, profound way, which motivated me to get in contact with them. So after the meeting, with Rotary, I, I get in contact with Natalie, who is the 
CEO of this company. And we started to discuss whether for a small company like us, here with a subsidiary in St. Petersburg, it would make sense to go through this process. And she convinced me, yes, that's the right approach. Everybody, everybody can do something for sustainability and to save our environment by reducing CO2 emission. So what we did together, we analyzed our CO2 consumption by having a look about the electricity consumption, having a look on paper, what kind of waste we are producing, how much water we are consuming, and what is the ecological culture of our employees. At the end of this, we realized and we got an, an, an report about 63 pages they set up very professional, very profound, that we, we are 10 employees and six engineers, we are producing 25 tons of CO2 every year. This equals to 298 trees consumption. So we 10 people every year asking 298 trees being cut off. That was too much. And that's not my inner idea of doing business in an environmental, healthy way. So we, we sat together, we were thinking, is it necessary that the ventilation system runs 24 seven? We are not 24 seven in the office. Why not making it automatically shut on, shut off one hour before and one hour after our official office hours? Why not printing a paper has two sides? Why not printing on the back side? We are not used to it, but it is possible. What, why are we throwing all our waste, whether it's paper, food, plastic, glass, batteries into one bin. Yeah, it is in Russia, so, but who, who says that we are not allowed to make changes? And who does not allow us to talk to our employees and say, if you have been in the kitchen or in the change room, and you know that the next, no one will come in again, why not switching off the electricity light? Why not checking which kind of electricity light we have? Maybe we change from the tubes and the standard bulbs to LEDs. We already did something before, so the remaining 20% we immediately did. What interesting was when we started this, inter this audit together with all goods and then followed by the communications with the employees, they were all supportive. There was no one who said, I don't care, we are in Russia, we, we are doing our own ways here. No, everybody was supportive. And we, we changed the settings for the ventilation system. We reduced the paper by, in Russia, it is very, very documentative intensive. You have a lot of documents to be signed double side each contract and they are the terms of a contract are about one year if you want to have a term for two three four years it's hard convincing the other party and then two contracts signed with ladies who career so bring it from a to b because the russian mail system is not uh, reliable so we were looking for Electronic signature. Yes, possible. Electronic signature, certified electronic signature. Just not just your signature scanning and put the scan on the document. No. Electronic certified signatures with a certain electronic key, which is only for you, with a company in between who handles the information so that it is traceable 
and it is legally binding these exchange documents. And we started this process with our 35 partners we are working with. I'm not talking about the customers, 35 partners who are supporting our business. We were talking about, and at the beginning, yeah, we can do now, 30 are working with us on this electronic signature exchange. Five remaining, we are still reminding them every month, please move, please move. It's also an efficiency increase on your side. So by doing something, by doing motivating the people, by giving them arguments why it helps to do this, we had a chance of a little mindsetting. We also started to create waste selection in our office. So I purchased two big bins, one for paper, one for plastic, and one for ordinary food, and a selection bin for batteries. And they are services, and they are starting more and more services in Russia to handle and to re refurbish these kind of waste. They learned that these might be valuable resources where you can also make some money with. And we offered the employees, if they want to participate in it, they can bring their private batteries, paper, special plastic boxes to us, and we collect them and we will organize them with a pickup so that it is traceable being going into the recycling process. The last is that I set the goal, I want to organize and operate as a CO2 neutral business. How can that work? We, we have logistics, we have packing materials, we still have to print the delivery documents and papers and sign them. So how does it work? The first step is that we further analyze what we can reduce. And at the end, we will be able to reduce 10 tons of CO2 emission every year or down by 80, 70 trees. And for the remaining, we will create a project where we are going to plant trees to neutralize our CO2 consumption, which is which we cannot reduce. We need to have electricity to run our PCs, to run the light. We need to have trucks transporting our goods to our customers and to pick up the cust uh, from customs and so on and so on. But I'm pretty sure that when doing this and motivating people to sustainability and CO2 neutral business is possible and everybody is willing to support. Yeah, that's about it. What I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to share with you. If you have some questions, please feel free. I'm more than happy to answer uh, each of yours. Thank you very much. Andreas, can I ask a question? Sure. No, I'm just curious. I, I don't fully understand what your company does. Uh, the parent company, you manufacture equipment and then you are servicing here only the equipment that you manufacture and, and, uh, and place into use in Russia. Is that right? Yes, uh, the parent company in Germany uh, developed, designs, uh, manufactures these packing machines for the tobacco industry. Mm -hmm. uh, they are sold to the tobacco industry worldwide. Uh, in the past years, we were very successful to uh, sell these machines to Russia. And uh, these machines need support by spare parts, repair, maintenance. And this is what we are offering. 
How, how many different models of equipment do, does the company manufacture that you need to well, service? We have a tree of about 120 different machine types. And, and those are all placed, uh, all operating in Russia, those 120? Uh, we have uh, different machine types. Yes. We have uh, 120 lines, which consists of minimum four up to 10 different machine types um, in operation in, in mm. Russia and the former um, Soviet Union companies, mm. countries. Cool. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Natalie. Natalia. Hi, Andreas, I have a question. Uh, now, with the trend to reduce smoking and to reduce, well, uh, and uh, you know what I mean, uh, has your company lost uh, some of your business or you are still going on with the same capacities and uh, variety of this machinery? Of course, this trend uh, or in, in, in a healthy environment to reduce smoking uh, had also an impact on our sales uh, and our activity. Uh, at the moment, uh, and it all started in America with a fight uh, to, to ban tobacco. And it, yeah. uh, it has sometimes some very weird results that uh, the jurisdiction wants the supplier or the manufacturer of a good that he's not allowed to make advertising for his own product uh. on, his, on his product, on his product. I'm not talking about advertising on billboards or in newspapers or in, in, in the cinemas. No, on the product itself, the jurisdiction wants to forbid advertising. Very interesting point to see it, but that's a sidestep. Yes, we, we faced some reductions, but on the other hand, um, there are now, the industry is moving, we call it from the um, machine fab fabricated cigarettes to the reduced risk products. You might have heard about this ICOS. Um, this is based on studies. It reduces the risk of um, lung cancer or any other, other diseases. And these sticks, which are then specially produced with a special tobacco processing, these sticks also need to be packed. And this is our advantage. We have machinery which can pack these sticks into the packs. And uh, these new business or this new pack style offers us a great chance and challenge uh, to, mm -hmm. to cover the losses which we have on the yeah. cigarette line. I see. Thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah. Another question, Natalia? Uh, can I? Uh, okay, then I absolutely loved your idea of planting trees. Did I understand you correctly that you sort of make up for the possible losses that are, are caused by <laughs> by your machinery in uh, producing cigarettes or whatever? or cigars, uh, you compensate plant, or will compensate or are going to compensate planting trees. Could you specify on that, please? Yes, uh, I'm talking about our subsidiary in St. Petersburg. I'm not talking about the whole FOCA organization. Uh -huh. The numbers which I gave of the consumption of trees is just our small subsidiary in St. Petersburg. And uh, in order to bring this up to um, a CO2 neutrality, we further have to reduce our CO2 emission and the remaining which we cannot reduce. Therefore, we will, as a compensation, we will plant some trees here in St. Petersburg. It will be um, together with all the employees shall participate in it so that they feel what they are doing. And we will, we will talk to the government or, or, the, or to the uh, small needs of, of the different region in St. Petersburg, uh, which avenue or which um, 
prospect we might be able to plant new trees. I see. Very That's very interesting. I won't spend any more time on this. I will probably write you a letter, I mean your club, about something about planting trees because our club has some ideas. Very good. Very good. Alexander Saboni, you had a question. Yes, uh, first uh, a short uh, question and then uh, a comment. Thank you very much uh, for a very interesting uh, speech, uh, Andres. Um, we, when we look at uh, all the measures that we have taken according to this COVID-19 uh, situation, are there any of these measures that you think that you will bring in post-COVID-19? Is there anything that you have learned that you thought this would be nice to bring further forward? For example, having people employees to work at home one day a week or something like that? Sure, there are some. Uh, we learned from the logistic side that there are other um, logistic companies which do it faster than during the COVID-19 times and cheaper. So this, this is one learning. The other learning is, uh, and I was very enthusiastic at the beginning, home office. Why? pressing employees in a corset 40 hours, eight hours a day from till. I was at the beginning very, very happy, let's say till the last two months that they were motivated, the results were brought, the customers were happy. Uh, we are the trend, we, we, our small company are the trend setters or the benchmark setters for other suppliers. Mm -hmm. So that makes us really proud. Um, and all that in home office regime. But what I realized in the last two months is that the attention, the motivation, the inner motivation, the inner link to the company is suffering that the people are sitting at home. You need the community. You need your colleagues next to you. He's motivating you or dismotivating or correcting you in the right way or in the other way. And, and, and this, in the home office, sitting alone, yeah, the whole day in front of your laptop, yeah, team meetings, everything is possible, but this personal, this, this together, this feeling you cannot create by these virtual uh, communities. That's, uh, yeah, I, I was at the beginning very, very open for, for home office, for this flexibility, I don't care whether someone is working on Sunday morning or at night, as, as long as the results during the day are given. But when you see that this link, this uh, motive, and therefore the motivation is, is, is vanishing away, then you have individuals and you do not have any more company culture and, and you cannot spearhead this company culture. So. Uh, I'm not yet quite sure what I'm going to do, whether I'm, I, I definitely, I will not come, go back to 100% office. No, it will that's, be that's the thing. You will not go back to 100% office. You will do no. a blended thing. Yes. Yes. A, a more flexible thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then uh, secondly, just a, a, a short comment on, um, on the whole environmental CO2 uh, thing you talked about. Very, very interesting. We had in our club uh, three weeks ago, a presentation on UN sustainability goals. So it is also a good topic to take up in a Rotary Club, in particular because the environment is now the seventh out of the 17 uh, uh, development goals that Rotary has taken up. And your example is an extraordinary good example, uh, Andreas, because it is a thing where you would usually say that, that this has nothing to do with environment. You know, you look at what you are doing in your small subsidiary and say, okay, this will make no sense. Uh, and it certainly does. So it's an ex extraordinary, very good example of this. So thank just you. A comment. Thank very you, good. Alexander. Anybody else have a question? Raise your hand, please. Uh, Antonina. <clears throat> First, is, is a comment. Um, uh, absolutely brilliant presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, what struck me the most is uh, that you mentioned flexibility of uh, Russian business people, flexibility set of mind. Yeah, that's absolutely. This, absolutely. this uh, impressed me very much because 
uh, I'm in touch with my middle class uh, uh, relatives who are in business and they have their own opinion on this subject. So this is interesting. Second, uh, here in Canada and in my uh, past, uh, when I was involved in agri-technical agri agri biotechnology, uh, we were working with company Decluate who produced uh, dryers for the uh, tobacco industry. Dryers. And uh, when tobacco industry here in Canada collapsed and in many other countries, uh, they just re, uh, uh, reused uh, this approach to drying of other material. So like you are doing with packaging. It's a uh, and uh, so it's uh, doable, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and uh, what I like the most of all in your presentation as well is your attitude, because it's not like a bloody capitalistic approach to profit. Mm -hmm. No, it's humanistic. You treat uh, your world with human approach, with uh, uh, actually uh, very impressive. And uh, the last question is, uh, how many Russian citizens are working in your company in a branch in St. Petersburg? Okay, well, we are into, thank you very, Andamina. Thank you very much for your warm words. Uh, really appreciate it. And it motivates me to, to further continue on this way. Um, to answer your question, we are in total 16 members out of the 16, two Germans and 14 Russians. Thank you. Very good. Another question, please. Anyone got a question from the floor? So I'm gonna make a comment to uh, Andres while we're waiting to see if anybody else has a question. Andres, it sounds to me like you're coming up with a new project for our club, uh, planting trees. Um, you're going to find out information about uh, how, when, and where, and why. And after you get that information, uh, you need to share that with us other members. We may decide to take up some sort of project as a club and maybe do something that could make an impact on the reduction of CO2. I don't know, but you're going to be gathering some very valuable information. So you may be asked upon in the future to participate mm -hmm. or give us a briefing for club members. Um, as a club member, there are nine of us. We can actually, with club funds, purchase the trees, go out and plant them, um, do lots of different things. So that's just another thing we can put on our list. So thank you very much for that. Any other any other questions from anyone? Anybody have a question? Yes, uh, Gene, you got a question, Gene. Unmute your unmute yourself, please. Unmute. You're still muted, Gene. There you go. There you go. Got it. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. So thank you, Andreas. It's, uh, uh, I have a saying about uh, our club is the best club in the world. But with people like you, I am very proud to be a Rotarian. But this is my question to Michael and yourself. Uh, we have here in uh, Canada, uh, and our club has a foundation. If you uh, you can donate money to that foundation to do the work of Rotary and get a tax receipt, is that applicable in Russia or any advantage? <laughs> we'll let our treasurer answer that. He's been doing a treasury for a while with our club. I'm gonna let him answer that. Uh, I should not talk about, I uh, know how to phrase it. Um, I was, I was explaining about the flexibility uh, the Russian people can show. So with all the restrictions they're sometimes given by this uh, state, I would not say state, but by this environment we are working in it. Um, yes, uh, it will be, would be difficult, but uh, there are always ways to find uh, that there that it's possible to transfer funds from A to B and, and to be supportive in one or the other projects. Gene, to answer your question a little bit more, 
you know yeah. that maybe you've heard in America, we have, I think it's called um, CO13, something of that nature, a nonprofit organization where you can make a donation and they don't pay taxes on it. I don't remember the exact code, but there's an American code for that. When I'm in America, in my club in Colorado years ago, I want to make a donation. I make a donation to a foundation that they give me a receipt. I use that receipt on my taxes to lower my taxes that I have to pay. Um, so you can give the charities, you can do that in America. I don't know if that's what you're, you're referring to in Canada, if you have something similar to that. Yes, uh, we do. Uh, okay. They, that, doesn't, that does not exist in Russia. Okay, that, thank you very much. That's, that's yeah, what so, uh, I wish it did. But again, it's another issue. And just as we have done on other projects, we are able to find ways to transfer funds, move money around, and it's not illegal. We make sure that we don't do anything illegal, but we can move money around donations to put into charities here in Russia and other places. So there are ways, there are flexibilities, a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of paperwork, but you can do it. But we don't have that item you were talking about here in Russia. Any other right. questions? <laughs> oh, okay, there's another one. Oh, is that Irina over there? Is that Irina? Yes, Irina, you have a question. Uh, short question, Andreas. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, did you lose uh, during this COVID uh, digital civilization, I would say? Uh, working with digital. Did you lose any of your workers because they are uh, unable to work with uh, digital or their, uh, we say, procrastination? It was difficult for them to be stable and work? No, no uh, we equipped everybody who was in need to have one. Every of the 16, uh, the 10 in the office, they had all PCs. We switched from PC to laptop. We equipped them all with um, iPhones so that they were able to connect uh, through their iPhone with hotspots to the internet, wherever they are. Uh, we did not lose any one of them. Um, we still have them all on board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Any other questions? Anybody else have a question out there? Yes, I have one. It's well, I'm speaking. sorry. I'm sorry. Andres has got his hand up. Andres, you have a question? Okay. Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, well, Andreas, you are talking about uh, reducing CO2, stuff like that, doing something to the environment. Um, at the same time, you're working in a tobacco industry. So you're supporting an industry that causes people's, well, even deaths, yes, and causes cancer, causes um, damage to, to health. Um, what do you think? Uh, you're, you're doing something bad to the society at the same time trying to, to reduce CO2 uh, to the society. Aren't you in the wrong industry, actually? Uh, then, I should share, uh, no, then I should share why I moved into this industry. Um, I'm an engineer. After the study, I started to work for a company weighing and proportioning in the steel branch. What are we weighing? Whether we have belt wires so that the tons of ore, the tons of coal, the tons of lime during the transportation could be measured in tons per hour. And then when you go into the steel plants and the ovens that the mixture of lime, coal, um, steel, ore is in the right portion to produce the correct quality of steel. And after three, four years from the technical point of view, it was not any more challenging for me. And then I was looking around to find a new job. And once of a sudden I was asked for an interview in Frankfurt in the airport for a company in the north of Germany where I never wanted to go to. I was always orientated to the south, to the Alps, uh, to the Mediterranean Sea. So I, the interview went well. I was asked to, to have the interview at the company in the north of Germany. I drove there. And part of the interview was that they shared and showed me their production, where they finally assembled the machines. And while I was walking through there and was guided through there, I realized 
that these machines are so complex that I will never understand them. And that was the challenge for me. That was the point. If you see right from the beginning that there is a product which you will never understand means that you have to learn your whole business life. There's not after four or five or six years, you know everything and that's done. No, you will ever continue to learn. And that was the motivation to go into this industry. At that time, I took not, I was also smoking. Um, at that time, smoking was in every city, in every office, in every pub, it was allowed. Smoking was not banned. It was not, has had not this negative touch as it has right now, 28 years ago. So when you are working in this industry and you're, you're, you're successful in the industry or in, in a company, then where is your motivation to, to change, to move? And when you look back to the settlements which happened in America, it was all at the beginning in America. It was located in America. America started, the American companies, Philip Morris, for example, started then to split their business. And Philip Morris America, Philip Morris International. So we still continued to support uh, Philip Morris USI, of course, and Philip Morris International. Uh, on the one hand, yes, it is right that the product is not healthy, can kill people. But if you look at this point, working in the auto industry, in the car industry, automobile industry, it also kills people, can kill people. So is it then an argument not to work for this industry? And not working in this industry where still a good money is being made, it would not provide me with the luxury to think about and to change our office in a CO2 neutral office. You need some time, you need some ideas, and you need to have the financial resources to do so. And this is given in this branch and industry. So from this point, I don't see this as a conflict um, working for this industry and uh, creating sustainability. Okay. Again, it, it, Thanks. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult question. And for many people in many different industries, there is that question is if people are dying from your product or are you saving people from your product? And as you pointed out, Andres, I think there are many other industries, not just smoking industry, that this gets involved with. And it's a very theoretical question. Good question, should be discussed, should be debated, but I think that there is no, no one answer. I don't know if you can say there's one answer. I just give up everything because um, it's dangerous. As you said, cars, planes, oil, gas industry, all these things are killing people. So we can't give them all up, but uh, it's, it's a good debate. I think it's something that should be discussed. Andres, are, are you finished? If so, I'll move on. If not, if you have another question. I, I thought Walter had a question. Well, do, I want to find out if Andres Bitsy had any more, any other ah. question? Andres? Uh, thanks, fine. Okay, thank you. Got the answer. Walter, you're next. Great, thank you very much, Mr. President. I have one question, Andrea. Thank you very much for this introduction, although I had the pleasure of coming over for you, to you, uh, having not a, not a technological background, obviously it's uh, uh, still a lot of questions open on what it's all about. Um, I have actually an organizational question because I'm very into social change and psychological guidance of people, and especially this uh, COVID-19 uh, shows us how people even thinking about changes, they're not being asked to make a change. Um, but uh, having the reactive mode of operandum or modus operandum, which you've explained, that you granted your team the opportunity to go uh, remote, full-time remote. I'm interested in how the process worked. Did you just set up some emails and preparation for the team? Did you have uh, communication around it? Did you organize meeting calls? Did you have someone guiding your team through this process? Or was there something... Um, by declaration of presidency and these rules of regulations herewith, you have the laptops and work from home. Um, can you elaborate on this process? Very good question. And I'm glad that this question is raised. 
Uh, the, it was always my aim when I hired people that they fit into the team. We, it was never that the, a new employee just did the interview with me and I made the decision, I hire this person or not. It was all, always so that every applicant had to go and had to talk to every of my employees. So I had to make sure that the new one is accepted by everyone. And uh, they did the interview with the person. At the end, I did the interview. Then we were sitting together, we we're discussing it. And if someone said, no, uh, I have a not good feeling or could argue why he is not supportive for this uh, applicant, then we did not hire him. The all which we are on board are 100, had 100% 100 support by every employee at the time when they were hired. Why I'm talking about this, this creates a team spirit. This creates something I'm going to support it. I, I'm not alone. Uh, I am also asked about my opinion, whether this person should work with us or not when you're sitting around the table. So the team spirit was given. Not only the team spirit, was also the spirit, we help each other, we support each other. So when it came to the time that uh, this home office was on the horizon, we talked about it, of course, we talked about it. Uh, this is why we came up then and selected all the old laptops and handed over the laptops. We, we had already set up the structure of data storage that everybody had access to the data. Everybody had access to our ERP system, SAP, remotely. Uh, we checked this before I went to the Caucasus. And then it, it just happened. I, I ordered everybody into the home office regime. But we had one thing already in place before Every Wednesday, we have the so-called staff meeting. And in this staff meeting, everybody of every employee has to sit around and has, we have to meet and we have an agenda where we talk about what are the today's sales? What are the today's orders or this week's orders to the parent company? What are the, with the logistics? Do we have problems with import? So if we have problems with the import because the customers want to inspect and it takes one week, two weeks. Have we informed the customers? So these kind of ideas joined together, ideas were already in place. So we continue to do this on a Wednesday with Zoom meetings like we do right now. And on each Monday, we also initiated at the beginning having an additional meeting when we were talking about what are the topics for this week? Is that, that, does someone need some help? Uh, do we have some issues? Of course, we had some issues with logistics. How does have someone an idea how to solve it? So, and then we, we set up a, a WhatsApp group that people could talk easily to each other uh, by texting each other. Um, mobile phones uh, where the numbers were spread around and it worked. And uh, there was no, I did not have to orchestra you go, you do this, you do this, please go to the stock and unload the uh, incoming goods, store them. They were self-motivated. They organized themselves. So I was lucky on this. Thank you. Very good. Very good. That's, that's a very interesting thing. I know last year um, I wrote an article that was published in the executive magazine here in Russia uh, that was about leadership in leading people who are now working from home. And there are a lot of things that leaders need to think about adjusting when your crew is going to go from live face meetings to working at home. That people sometimes feel that they are neglected. They feel that they're left out and that connection has to be maintained so that they don't feel left out. So they do feel connected. And I did a lot of research on it before I wrote the article and uh, um, it, 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 it's a whole new ball game that we entered in 2020. Some companies were already starting to do it 
In America, there's 27% of the people were operating from home before the virus started. 27% people were working from home. Now it's much higher, but the question is, what's it gonna be after the pandemic's over? We don't know. So it's, it is a thing that people are doing more and more of, and we have to get adjusted to it. We're out of time. I can take one more quick question if somebody's got a short one. No more short questions? Nope, okay. For all of us, I'd like, on behalf of all of us, I'd like to give you a round of applause, Andres. Thank you very, very much for your presentation. We enjoyed it. It was a pleasure. We it learned, we not only learned about you and your company, we learned a little bit about you and the psychic also, a little bit about how you think a little bit. And that's very, very interesting as a team member on our Rotary team here to know a little bit about your thinking. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. I know that's a little bit personal, but thank you very much for, for sharing that. Um, Welcome and thank you for the interest in what I had to say reflecting your questions. Okay, very good. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about our projects. I'm not going to dwell on this a long time, but on our project, Andres and myself both have been talking to people in Texas in the United States. Previous meeting, I talked about the fact that a club wanted to sponsor another child at the Romanoff Center or at the Children's Rehabilitation Center. They said they wanted to do it, but there was a misconnect in communications. That misconnect has been cured. We're going to be receiving $3,200 from them in the very near future, and we will be able to sponsor another child. So Andres just went ahead in his company. He just had a huge inspection going on inside his company the past week. So as this is finishing, that week for him is over. Now we'll get back into it that we need to find a child from the CRC and we need to be able to transfer the funds so that we can support another child. That makes two out of our goal that we wanted to try to get. We're still working towards trying to raise 10,000 euros this year in order to get a couple more children through that process. But it was very good news that we were able to find a club that said yes, We've got the money. All we need to know is how to transfer it. We've given them the information and now we're waiting for payment. So we believe that's going to be go very well. We also are talking to another club now that's out in the West Coast in Oregon. And we're hoping that they're going to do the same thing. They're talking to us about how much we need and they're talking to their members about our project. So we think that this is a good ongoing project and we should keep it going we don't, certainly don't want to go backwards now. We want to make sure that we stay focused on this and still continue to try to raise funds for it. We also are investigating new opportunities for new projects, as I mentioned to you earlier. I said I went to Israel, uh, three of us did, and we met with the people there, and they're interested in cooperating with us, especially in the area of children's health and that could connect with our center and they have a center down there that they're trying to sponsor. We're gonna see how we can make connections between those two. So we are still actively pursuing projects. Even though we're small, we're still taking on projects. And something that I decided a couple of weeks ago that I just wanna put the words to, it's not a change in our procedures or our business, but I wanna put the words to it. I see this providing speakers as another one of our Rotarian project, projects. We are holding these meetings. People are coming. Many of you from Canada and other parts of the world are coming to our meetings and listening to our speakers, asking questions, learning something new, cooperating, building your network. I see this as a project for us too. And Randall has been doing a very good job of following up with all of you who have recommended speakers, to make sure we secure those speakers and get them to come to our meetings and publicizing it all over the place so that people will know about it. I see this as another project, even though it's not an official project, but it's something that we're working on and I wanna continue it. So that's a little bit about the projects that we have. The next thing I have for you is our upcoming meetings. Let me get to the meeting slide. And on 3 March, as Randall said earlier, Alexander Saboni, who is with us here this evening, him and Barrett are with us. He's going to be our speaker on the 3rd. He was one of the presidents early on in our club, and he was a founding member. So we're going to find out a little bit about history about our club that was started in 2004. 
So we need that for our current membership to understand where, where it got started and how it got started. And then Robert's gonna to talk to us about his project in Kenya. That should be very, very interesting. I was in Kenya several years ago on a job and um, I'm very anxious to hear what he has to say, especially outside of, this, of Nairobi, not in Nairobi, but outside the capital city and some local areas. I think it's gonna be very interesting. And then Robert Scott's gonna to talk to us on the 24th. We are open on the 17th for anybody that might suggest a speaker. If you have any ideas about a speaker for the 17th, please let Randall or myself know, and we'll be happy to follow up and contact the people and see if they can help. If we do not find a uh, speaker for the 17th, we will have a leadership growth activity, and I'll give a presentation with some exercises on, on leadership where people can <clears throat> excuse me, practice a few leadership things during our meeting. We'll do that on the 17th if we don't find anybody else. So also, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if I have any Irishmen in the crowd. Isn't 17 March St. Patty's Day? Isn't that St. Patrick's Day, 17 March? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. Yes. Yes, am I right? Yes. Right. All right. Right, all right, so on 17 March, if you come to our meeting, I'm gonna expect you to be wearing green, something <laughs> green. Gotta wear something green on St. Patty's Day. If you don't, somebody's gonna come around and pinch you. So you don't <laughs> wanna get pinched. So you gotta wear something green on St. Patty's Day on the 17th. Whatever we have, a speaker or an activity, you're gonna to need to try and think about wearing something green for St. Patty's Day. Let's celebrate that, that's another holiday. Okay, maybe we'll even find an Irishman to come over and sing to us for, for St. Patty's Day. I don't know. We'll find out what we can do. But that's our schedule for the coming month. <clears throat> Excuse me. It takes us through to the end. The 31st of March is the last day of the month. We haven't got that far out in our planning yet. But we do need to follow up with these speakers. They have confirmed they will be here. Now we need to market and advertise them and get more people to show up. We really appreciate the people who have shown up thus far. Are there any more comments? Anybody have any issues? Let me go back to the gallery view. Hold on a second. Gallery view for myself so I can see everybody. Does anybody have anything they want to discuss? You can raise your hand if you have a comment or something you want to make. Tom, we haven't heard from you at all. Any comments from you, Tom? You're in Beaverton, Oregon on the, on the West Coast. I'm trying to think of a good speaker. I know of uh, two ideas right now, and, but I need to call them to find out if they'd be available on the 17th of March. I so enjoy your meetings, Michael. Your speakers are just outstanding. Uh, I enjoyed listening to Andreas today, but I've learned so much uh, attending your session and uh, congratulations to you and your whole group, we're a long ways away from one another, but we're so close by Zoom. Thank you so much. I can reach out and touch you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, we appreciate that. We appreciate the comments and the feedback. As I said, this is sort of an unofficial project for us to try to provide speakers and to provide information for everybody. So we appreciate the support. Randall's got his finger out there. He's trying to touch. We, we do reach out and try to touch folks. So we didn't hear from you earlier, Tom. That's why I wanted to make it a comment from you. Joan, we haven't heard from you this evening. Uh, no, I'm sitting here thinking about some uh, speakers. We'd like you to come and speak at our Rotary Club and I'll give you an email on that. But I have a couple of ideas of speakers. So I'll try and get those off to you. Thank you very much, Joan. Appreciate that. And uh, I will do my best to meet your time and uh, the availability that you set up and see what we can do. I've done a okay. couple meetings in the US already and a couple in Canada already. So uh, we'll try and work something out. So thank you very okay. much. Natalia, you. you had a question, but other than that, dear, you didn't say much this evening. Do you mean me? I mean you, girl. <laughs> oh, I had some questions for Andres. Yes. I, I enjoy, Andres, I absolutely enjoyed your talk. I love this logical and emotional but this emotion is suppressed but his soul was seen absolutely seen his wonderful soul 
Andres, I'm speaking about you. <laughs> you, I you. Natalia, Natalia, if he unbuttoned his shirt and opened it up, you'd see he has a T-shirt with a big red S on the front of it. Oh. Mm. It's, it's what? Super, oh. Superman. <laughs> no, 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 no. We no, see no, you. No, no, no. He just, does, he just doesn't want anybody to see his T-shirt. So we know, we know what he's hiding, but uh, he just doesn't want to show anybody. That's fine. Thank well, you. Uh, so then I have to close here. So it's better uh, not. <laughs> Nancy, any comments, Nancy? No, just, um, I guess, echoing uh, Tom's that I really enjoy the meetings. Great speakers. And uh, I'm glad to hear that it will be a hybrid program when we can all start to meet in person because I would hate to lose contact with you as a group. Well, that's fine. You're more than welcome, absolutely. And we may be a small club of nine people, but we feel we have around 30 people because the same group keeps coming back to our meetings, uh, which we really, really enjoy. And the fact that, and that's what we were trying to tell the club in Modin, um, Israel last night, the fact that we're bringing their meeting, they had eight members and that's all they had was eight members plus us three they invited in. And I said, we have nine members, but we bring in almost 30 every week. So I don't know what we're doing exactly, but I'm not gonna change it right now. So I'm gonna keep it the same way. I'm not sure what it is, but we're gonna keep going this way and keep the interest up with good speakers the best we can. Excellent. So Thank we're you. gonna try and reach out and connect. Let's make, let's make the most of it. We all suffered and lost so doggone much this past year because of the, the virus and the pandemic. We lost so much. If we can get some extra out of this zooming around the world and connecting, then let's, get, let's take advantage of that while we can. Let's do everything we can with this. So we're just going in the right direction, trying to. Gene, any comment, please? Uh, I also have a thought, and I'll share with Joan about a speaker. We had an excellent speaker on dealing with uh, youth that are in trouble. Okay. And I would love to have you at our club, too. All you got to do is ask, dear. <laughs> We're working me. on it, Michael. Do you okay. want to be <laughs> night or day? <laughs> Dear, I have given I have given speeches at, around the world at three or four o'clock in the morning. I just get mm -hmm. up, give the speech, and then I go back to bed. So I'm okay. It's not... <laughs> okay. All right. We'll be in touch because we definitely want you to come. Okay. And I all think right. one of the thing one of the advantages of this whole pandemic has been able to be zooming all over the world. I, I am one of the um, I'm the lead in the district for education, and I zoom all over the world, and I've learned so much without flying to the country and uh, to you know, make sure that our projects are succinct. And it's also, as Michael said earlier, a chance to get with other Rotary Clubs and what projects could we do together if we'd like to unite and help each other out. There's so many opportunities. And Michael, I sometimes, and I know Nancy, some of us are on, uh, and uh, Anto Antono uh, Antonia, we're on uh, ICCs. And you know, yeah. your clubs almost become like an ICC for some of us that we're almost. getting to have better understandings about all kinds of things in Russia. Very good, thank you very, very much. And I, one last comment before I ring the bell and close the meeting. I don't know if any of you are Toastmasters. We have four Toastmasters on the screen, myself, Walter, Rami, and Randall. We are Toastmasters and Rotarians both. So half our club is in both groups. And you know, those two groups started cooperating in 2019. Yeah, 2019. They're not gonna combine the two clubs but they are cooperating on educating Rotarians how to be better speakers. And Toastmasters has set up some programs already for that. And if you're interested in more information about how Toastmasters and Rotary work together, that's another subject you can have me speak on because I have a program on that and I've already done that a few times. We're looking at trying to create better speakers within Rotary because when you have a project and you're trying to sell it, I don't mean literally sell it, but you're trying to promote it and you're trying to get people to participate in or give you donations, you need to be able to speak a little bit better. So Toastmasters can help with that. Andres has got one of his uh, favorite young men there. I believe that's his youngest, right? Andres, that's your favorite, your youngest? Your youngest, yes. The, the youngest out of five. Yeah, that's what I oh, thought five. it was. Five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, five boys and two oh, grand boys. boys. Whoa. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how to make girls. He only knows how to make boys. So he's stuck on that. Okay. And I, and I gave up. Uh, good for you. Good for you. Okay. 
if there's no more comments, I'm going to officially close the meeting. We're going to hang around for about another six or seven minutes, but I'm going to officially close the meeting. Tonight's meeting, I have to look at the calendar, refresh my memory. 24 February 2021 is officially closed.